Hello, well today I'm going to look at this uh, Macintosh 2CI. This has actually gone through quite a few uh, people in the past, well two actually. The last one was CRG Glenn, uh, who did a couple of YouTube videos on this, uh, trying to get it to work, but um, got frustrated and um, passed it on to me. Um, now, yes, yeah, so it's got quite a lot of battery damage, uh, which Glenn did most of the work on. But anyway, let's see how it gets on. Well, I've got the machine to start up. It things. The problem was that it was had a um, ROM not fully seated. Um, if I go to here, I need to restart. As you can see, it's only actually running code. And it just sits there, but it's actually still running code. So that's actually correct. I think it's on the screen asking for a disk. It's not actually checked the SCSI, which is interesting. Um, so there are still problems and it's not producing any signal. It's just something that is underneath the power supply. So my next um, thing I'm going to do is extend the, take the power uh, socket off of the board, connect it with a lot of wires uh, so I can re relocate the, um, piece of the power supply. And then I can get, actually get to the chips to check to see what they're doing. Well, it's been nearly a month since the uh, first part of the video. This is, uh, it's been quite a, a journey trying to get this machine working, but I have actually done it. Um, I'll document that further later. The, well, the first thing I did, of course, was to add an extension for the power. This means that I can plug the power in here and all the chips um, are available because the power supply basically takes up well basically a quarter of the um, motherboard and problematically also covers up all the this area including the RBV uh, custom chip which does a lot of the IO um, and the SWIM VIA well basically everything uh, the, the, other than the MPU um, over here you've got the um, new bus chips, but I won't have to worry about those for the moment because I haven't got any new bus uh, cards. But going, stepping back, the architecture of the um, 2CI is that you've got two custom chips, the MDU and the RBV. The MDU does most of the memory uh, operations, generates CAS, RAS, um, switches um, these buffer chips on and off in the direction. And over here you've got the RBV which does the onboard video, which takes uh, talks to memory, uh, be, uh, uh, or talks to memory to get the data and then sends it over to the, um, the the chip which then encodes it to the video the, the video that then comes out here um, complication is that if you use the onboard video then it will um, every half cycle and it will take up one cycle of every two which means the actual CPU only gets half the time so the whole system is actually slowed down massively. Um, in the first video, the last video, you saw that I got it to go Bing, which is exactly how um, Glenn um, sent it to me. So from that point on, it was basically trying to use the oscilloscope to map out where the signals go. Also use the um, multimeter to check continuity. 
Now, one um, red herring I uh, went down the rabbit hole with was that I saw the RBV, although it was outputting some signal, wasn't outputting a synchronisation uh, pulse on the sync pin. Um, so I thought, well, it, the video would work with um, sync on green, but there was no sync pulse, no sync signal. And that led me to think that the RBV chip was uh, faulty. So that was my first thing to concentrate upon. Um, I bought a, um, a donor um, to SI, which actually had has the same chipset and replaced the RBV chip. No change. So um, I thought, okay, maybe it is still a memory problem. So I checked all the signals, all the signal paths, everything was fine. Um, the one thing I noticed on this board is that there are no pull ups, which is really strange for a 68,000 base system usually you have pull-ups for the data and the address bus but nothing it all sorts of um, floats until it gets accessed very strange anyway that sent me again down another red herring route um, until last night I thought right okay oh, so, oh, sorry the night before last let's check all the signals over here on these chips the VIA first, and found that actually there was no signal on the address line 9 going on to the VIA. Um, so, resorted that, fine, that was working. Managed to then be able to get access to the onboard uh, diagnostics on in the ROM. Um, unfortunately, there's no documentation on that, which meant that that was completely useless. Anyway, last night I decided, although most Macs can boot without the, even having a SIM in place, a uh, SWIM chip in place, the, uh, is it the Steve Wozniak something or other machine? I can't remember. But anyway, most Macs will boot fine even if the SWIM is not even there. And I thought, okay, let's check all these signals and found, again, address line 9, on there, no signal. Um, but there was a signal to um, a VIA, a VIA, a VIA just here. And the trace isn't actually that long. It looks perfect, but there's no signal going down it. So I touched the pin and the VIA with a piece of, with a jumper, and suddenly the machine sprung to life and. Um, started asking for a disk. Um, right, okay. So, bodge wire time, bodge wire in, boot's fine. Um, I've got a, um, an iMega um, zip drive um, with a uh, bootable uh, OS um, MacOS system 7.5, uh, sorry, 6.5. 08 boots fine from that can even play um, lemmings so my next job is to remove this and um, basically put the plug back onto the motherboard and get it into the case uh, one thing I did notice was a fishy smell coming out of the power supply so eventually I'm going to take this out apart and replace the caps because Obviously, one of them has leaked. So anyway, that's my next job, the uh, the cable. See you later. Got the uh, power connector onto the board. Far easier to actually manipulate. So I can go through precisely what I found. Um, Glenn had done, well, 99% of the job. Um, in the end though, let's get discovered one data line to the um, uh, RB, um, RBV chip was um, damaged underneath, which meant, which is why that uh, when Glenn did get a display, 
there were lines down the screen because that was one bit of the display which wasn't showing and the other one is the bilge wire for the swim the uh, reason why it wasn't booting was that the ROM was asking the swim to do something and then not getting a reply so trying again and doing that continuously it was never finishing so it never finished booting as soon as I patched that it got past that point and booted fine so now I'm just going to put it into the case and see, see if it still actually works now I'll put that uh, pad, um, socket back on Here we are at the end of the project. Um, there are still a few issue, issues to uh, sort out. When you first switch it on, it um, takes a long while for the display to actually get to the uh, a voltage where the OSSC will pick it up. Um, I think there's a problem with capacitors in the power supply. I've ordered a complete set, but as it is at the moment, whilst it warms up, the machine works perfectly well. And as you can see, we'll run games, fine. Um, the floppy drive, unfortunately I couldn't get that to work properly. Um, let's quick, 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 turn the sound off on that. Um, so I'm going to have to find a new floppy drive. Um, I'm currently booting off of the Zip100 drive, very useful. Um, the ZIP250 SCSI drives don't actually boot on Macintoshes, strangely enough. So ZIP100 is the best one. You can get images um, online and you can get, if you find a USB ZIP drive, it's easy enough to just put the image on the uh, 100 meg drive, uh, disk. So anyway, as you can see, it's working. Um, and I'm trying to find a place to get a new floppy drive and that's about it. We have a working Mac 2CI.